A bipartisan commission rising national debt recommends higher taxes and big cuts. The commission says it could reduce the federal deficit by four trillion dollars over a decade with a series of moves including higher federal taxes, a 10 percent cut to the federal workforce, 700 billion dollars in cuts to Medicare and Social Security, and raising the retirement age. Already Republicans are speaking out against the tax hikes and Democrats are speaking out against cuts to Social Security. Senator Bernie Sanders is here tonight. Thanks for joining us. Good to be with you. Now you are very concerned about these social security cuts that are being proposed. Yes. Look, the fact of the matter is social security has been enormously successful for 75 years. It has done everything it's supposed to do. It has kept millions of seniors out of poverty. It has protected with dignity people with disabilities and helped widows and orphans. And the reality is that social security has not contributed one nickel to our national debt or our deficit. In fact, that has a $2.6 trillion surplus. It could pay out every benefit owed to every eligible American for the next 29 years, according to the Congressional Budget Office. So I'm going to do everything that I can to make sure that we protect Social Security and, in fact, that we strengthen it. Now, how do you cut the deficit if you don't rein in spending and make some cuts, some practical cuts? Sure. Well, that's right. We do have to deal with the deficit, which, by the way, let's remember how it was caused. It was caused by two wars unpaid for, tax breaks for the rich unpaid for, a Medicare Part D prescription drug program written by the pharmaceutical industry unpaid for, and the Wall Street bailout unpaid for. That's the reality. My job is to protect the middle class, which is collapsing, lower income people where poverty is increasing. Now during all of this period, in the last 25 years, 80 percent of all new income went to the top 1 percent who now earn 23 and a half percent of all income in America, more than the bottom 50 percent. So if you continue to give tax breaks to the very richest people, cut programs for the middle class, slash Social Security and Medicare, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I think what you do is do away with the loopholes that currently exist in tax law so that we lose right now a hundred billion dollars every year in tax havens from wealthy people and corporations in the Cayman Islands in Bermuda. You have Exxon Mobil that made 19 billion dollars last year in profits paying zero this year in taxes. You have corporations all over America escaping their tax burden. So I think what you do is you ask those people who have made huge sums of money to pay their fair share of taxes. I think you take a hard look at military spending. A lot of what we are spending now on the military is fighting the Soviet Union and the old Cold War, weapon systems that are no longer relevant. So I think we can make significant cuts in military spending, and I think there are other agencies of government that can be cut. But when the middle class is hurting, as it is today, I think it is absolutely wrong to start slashing programs and raising taxes on those people. Now, doing what you want to do may be more difficult. There's a new landscape uh, on the way in Washington. John Boehner, a Republican, is going to be Speaker of the House. Now, you were in the House for a long time. What does he like to work with? Well, John is a bright guy. He's a very conservative Republican who will do his best to protect the wealthiest people in this country and corporate interests. What John wants to do is to make sure that we give tax breaks to the wealthiest people and the large corporations. And at the end of the day, what he will also be doing is trying to balance the budget on the backs of workers, veterans, the elderly, and the poor. That's a, uh, an approach that I strongly oppose. Now, Democrats are still in control of Congress right now. Uh, are we going to see a push to get some controversial measures passed before the Republicans take control of the House, like repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell? Well, I certainly hope so. Whether we can or not remains to be seen, but I would like to see us do that. My view is that anybody who joins the military who's prepared to put his or her life on the line fighting for this country should be judged on the ability of their ability to fight and be a good soldier, not on their sexual orientation. All right. Senator Bernie Sanders, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure.